Hey, <clears throat> croak. Hey, how's it going? So I pulled some cards and <laughs> this is this is new for me. I guess it's a political reading. <laughs> well, you know, it's not that I'm disinterested in politics. Uh, I, I don't even know if that's right either. I'm not not disinterested. I'm kind of disgusted and over it. Uh, but before I get rolling, let me let you look at my signs. Is that good? Okay. Uh, so I pulled cards from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. And it was one, one card that I pulled, a single card, I should say. Uh, come on, don't space out now. It's the number 30 card. <laughs> <laughs> at the top there you see and it is the horseman horseman and the subtitle is herald of change and uh honestly this is not how i feel about the whole uh guilty uh verdict in the former president's trial uh, but I guess it's so in the ether that I gotta talk about it too <laughs> and so the general mood um, you know mostly my feet is to the left there is <laughs> there is a little bit of right that bleeds through and the left is feeling this away <laughs> that's what I can say my uh, my Facebook feed has a few people that uh, post political stuff. I generally don't. And most people in my feed generally don't, which I appreciate. But a few people are crowing about this. A few other people, I should say. It's just everywhere. I actually have not uh, looked at Twitter today. But a lot of my people on Twitter are from other countries, so... Um, Hey, yes, I was on there earlier this morning. I didn't see anything about it, which made me happy. <laughs> but the reason why I'm not like like all overjoyed <clears throat> about it is because uh, I guess it's serious. Of course, it's serious. It's insane that we now have a convicted felon who can't vote, but all, but can run for president. It's it's very strange. I don't, I don't like it. I think we kind of messed up here as a as a general public. <laughs> but I suppose that's why we get to have this right now, so that we can see like, oh my God, we really kind of effed up here. <clears throat> so a lot of people. <laughs> these people are, uh, have been, I might be amongst this particular group of people I'm about to talk about, but have been looking at the, the former president, uh, be, like since before he was president and his family and, uh, it wasn't a good look. <laughs> Didn't indicate like the best most honest above board business people even down to family details uh of and business like interfamily it just <clears throat> it was just it wasn't a good look in my opinion but not just me <clears throat> so a lot of people have been like why is this guy getting away with stuff forever and like it doesn't leave your head and i don't know why um because i'm not a lawyer i'm not a politician for years it really didn't it didn't matter to me that much what the dude said and did although 
he'd say and do things that I would hear about and I'd be like, that guy sucks. <laughs> so when he was going to be president, I was like, oh my God, this is a really, really bad idea. And a lot of people would disagree with me, but I, I think I was right. <laughs> Because now um, he is just out of control because things are no longer going his way because a lot of people have just had their head to the ground. And now I'm talking lawyers because the guy, the former president, just incurred a bunch of charges. And I'm hoping that the thinking of these lawyers that I want to talk about who have had their sort of nose to the grindstone, like, just being like the, <laughs> I don't know if salt of the earth is the right thing, but the right description, but they definitely are working with a certain focus that has them below, like, all of the kind of noise and racket that the guy the former president generally produces around himself continuously. So many reasons for him doing that, but obscure, <laughs> just all big in my head, obscure, like yes, to obscure what he's doing, to obscure the truth of what he's talking about. Well, and truth. <laughs> He'll get his seven truths about the same thing a day, I think. <laughs> I, I know he's can. I know it's one of his, like, major capabilities. He's, he's great at that. He's got that skill going for him. <clears throat> oh, but so I started to talk about why I wasn't, like, all super thrilled and excited about it. And it's not even about, I mean, it is about, like, the sort of, assist like it wants to assist the entropy or possible entropy of the American institutions which just in a nutshell we're known for like the whole democracy thing and uh, diversity and success in the face of diversity and actually like because of the diversity and I don't know we got so diverse we can't stand each other or something and that is not conducive to like all of the stuff that we're supposed to be known for. And some of us, I mean, I would rather be well thought of amongst other humans on the planet than not because we have to like cooperate with them and, and trade with them. And it's just better for relations if we're not, you know, doing things to minus each other. <laughs> um, so, I, I feel like he's a destructive person and he's somehow wriggled into positions where he can spread the destruction, the one thing he's generous with. Like, here, have some of this crap bowl that's gonna topple stuff that you care about if I can. <laughs> Oh my God, I went, into, <laughs> I went into W there for a second. Pardon me. Just as an aside, I, I, I don't know, the two of them together, I feel like sort of we're working toward the same type of destruction. And that's a very layered statement, but man, I ain't trotting out all those layers. I mean, do what you will with that. <clears throat> but there's a reason that this guy is like the vehicle for all of this it is because someone scoped the guy out and knew like how easily he could be influenced. <laughs> God, it's, it's laughable how easy it's and uh, just fluffery, just uh, he'll like roll over on his back and bare his belly like a dog. <laughs> he loves it. 
<laughs> and he'll like I don't know momentarily while you're doing it I guess love you and like love it that you're singing his praises but man I bet as soon as you get out of sight and that guy holds a grudge for, I mean, he won't apologize, no matter how bad and wrong and guilty he looks and actually is, that everybody can see. He's still like, nope, not me. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing wrong. Everything's right. It's like, okay. It gives you a little bit of a headache trying to, like, even be near that, his reality because it's like you're expected to make your brain do things that it's telling you but that's not real that's not true that's not what happened like those sorts of things you move into his world and it's like your brain has to go through changes it has to like <laughs> uh, you know <clears throat> When, when I think of making your brain change, I think of like the wrinkles moving around into new configurations. I think of moving into that world and it sort of like erases configurations the way he likes to try to erase institutions. <clears throat> but I have also said that I think he's other directed. I think he's definitely inclined to go along with everything he's doing because it's easy and it benefits him and what he wants to do and the image he wants to create and the family that is so important to I mean god his family is like an asset to him too you know like whatever he may feel about them personally I feel like they're like collateral in a way you know like social collateral just, just a thought <clears throat> so <clears throat> The lawyers, back to the lawyers, have been at work. Well, they have also been watching. Like, they are people, too. They'll, you know, New York cases, maybe some of those lawyers are from New York or went to school in New York and are old enough to remember or old enough to have learned about the man's family. Uh, like I said, I feel like there would be no questions about whether or not he's even a person that would do the stuff he was accused of, except he has a background. <laughs> uh, but it all happened before the age of fake news, except for the originator of fake news. And this does not get trotted out into the public often enough. The man, the former president, used to call up all kinds of radio stations and newspapers and I guess like all manner of places posing as not himself with that very distinctive voice. There's no way you can miss him and I'm sure he did the, what I just did, the sniffing then too, which is also a distinctive accent to your speech. <laughs> People always notice that. It's like one of the first things when he starts talking extensively. <laughs> so he would call these places and claim to be someone named John Barron. John Barron! The name of his son, Barron. <laughs> I just think it's a weird thing. But he would call up and sing Donald Trump's praises and pretend to be his publicist. And people would absolutely know that it was not whoever John Barron was supposed to be. But they'd just go along with it. And, you know, I saw a documentary about it. That's, that's how I know about this. So I actually got to see there were some recordings that are still in existence that uh, a couple of the reporters had. And I think one of them was or is at the New York Times, or maybe it was the New York Post. I don't know, but like I said, the dude was everywhere trying to, like, pump up business for, I don't know, his client, Donald Trump, and his agent or whatever, his, yeah, agent, sure. Publicity agent. It bizarrely sounds exactly like Donald Trump. It must be the proximity training, right? <clears throat> so, 
So I also knew that about him before, like he became known to mega people or, and like the key people that you don't really hear about them anymore because I guess now they call themselves something else, but I don't think they went anywhere. So whatever they are these days, a lot of them, uh, for some reason, just didn't know these things, didn't notice even older ones, uh, which surprised me, but whatever. Um, I just wonder if they knew these things in, in advance. Well, I don't know, like people that you think would know better now are openly saying, yeah, I'm going to vote for him. And I'm like, wow, do you know what all goes along with that? Do you not <laughs> see how like it's going to affect the other people in and around the world you live in negatively? And they'll have feelings about that, especially if you're out there announcing that you voted for the guy that took away their civil rights and their female health, privacy, and rights for them to, you know, care for their own bodies that they live in 24-7. I'm like, how... I... Other people's realities, okay? <laughs> they People do live in their own worlds. And some of those worlds can, like, cluster up like soap bubbles, I guess. Because they're not all the same. They all have, like, a weird, like, mental kink. And not not the horny kind. <laughs> the cuckoo in the head kind. It's just an opinion. It's not the end of the world. I, I did show you the sign to point that out. But let me reiterate. It's just my opinion. It is not the end of the world. However... <clears throat> Now that the lawyers got involved, there are some women, and one of them is involved in that first guilty case, that first criminal trial. I don't know if there's gonna be more. Uh, well, I guess there would be with the government stuff. Like, they still haven't gotten to the, oh my God, this, <laughs> the documents in the boxes that were in the bathroom and all over the golf course and Oh, it's going to be a treasure hunt. Oh, isn't that funny? I was watching the documentary on Max about uh, Las Vegas' Ori... <laughs> Origins. Origins. And they were talking about the Treasure Island Hotel. So, yeah, treasure hunt. Like, where in the world are the other documents? <laughs> I have heard from sources that, uh, humans, by the way, <laughs> that, uh, more documents will be found in the most, uh, appallingly apt places. Uh, but these same people have also said that he was going to get his, and finally the tide was going to turn where he's not going to still just get away with everything. And so the lawyers working away have known they have to have every T crossed and I dotted. Uh, like their case has to be impeccable. So no one can say fake this, whatever that, because everything cannot be fake. And... and God, I don't want to get totally sidetracked, but I feel like this destruction of institutions, like if we can't even count on our court system and our jurors and our way that we decide cases, then that's going to create, like, that'd be pulling out, like, the fatal piece of your Jenga of life. And there are forces... I almost went into rage against the machine. There are forces in this country, and I gotta say, out of this country, that's the only thing that makes sense, because we do have people in other countries that do not want to see this country succeed. And not that we don't do the same with them, but they're constantly, like, spies about and people trying to undermine systems. And we have had, like, Russians trying to infiltrate our government like roaches for 
decades and decades. I am sorry if people don't like that uh, uh, characterization. I only use that particular word because they're like, they're an infestation and then they stop. My music stops, speaking of stop. You know, they get found out, a few of them get caught and I, I don't know if they always catch any of them. I, all of them, I mean. I don't know if they always catch all of them. I feel like there's some that just are like sleepers and just keep feeding information because God, the destruction is so efficient and the front man, I know he, that guy's not doing everything, the former president, obviously. He does not have the capacity, but there are sympathetic people that do and I feel like he's the conduit to whatever can be gained uh, by doing some dirt to your own government and people. Opinion commentary, opinion commentary, please understand. Um, <clears throat> so I, God, I started talking about that and that, that uh, spy kind of stuff, but to bring it back to Trump, I, I think he's a tool of that kind of thing. And I would say that it's not like just Russian compromise. I would just, I would also say that it's probably Eastern as well, like uh, China and here at home or, and also like anywhere else, I would imagine somebody ha everywhere has a stake in like, you know, the U.S. did this once upon a time or is doing this right now and oh my gosh it's even happening here right in front of our faces under our noses but I don't want to get any more sidetracked than that but um so the women are coming forward and things are beginning to roll in the other direction and I just feel like <laughs> the truth the truth hurts it stings um But, you know, this <laughs> this land crab, I, it looks like it would be like an ancient creature. And that is right now telling me that that was the waiting period. <laughs> like, we had to wait since the era when everything sort of looked like this that was running around. Like land crabs or pinchy shrimp, land shrimp. But they punch hard with the tail and sting. Anyway, um, and uh, it, the time has come. Now's the time um, for. Like I said, the tide has turned. So, at the very least, he's going to trials to determine his guilt or innocence. A lot of people have been waiting for that. A lot of people have been waiting and working a long time because he's got such a strong uh, backing and influence that with systems weakened the way they are, like everyone's questioning everything. No one wants to believe anymore that there's anything to believe in. And I get it. I mean, sometimes I question all of that myself, but certain things are still holding together and I have a very good idea of what the alternatives are and I don't want them. This is like pretty much as good as it gets. Why would you want to change it? Sorry. So, <clears throat> at the top, that icon, that triangle, Man, I've been getting a lot of pyramid triangle stuff. <laughs> I'm still like not fully understanding what it's about, but I got a pretty clear message today that seeing those images or some kind of talking about power, I just haven't determined who, what, how, where, and why quite yet. There's a lot of stuff happening. Like too many things at once to like I gotta think about it. But anyway. 
fire element there is what that indicates and fire also indicates anger um cleansing like finally <clears throat> uh or a fire can shed light on like dirty deeds uh, so I pulled two cards. Oh, sorry. I didn't uh, say where I got the animal cards from, did I? The animal cards are from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. And I pulled two cards from, also from the Angel Number deck. And they are the 2222 card and the 888 card. And I forgot to look up stuff I wanted to look up for this. Oh, well, I guess I guess I'll just wing it. So the 222 card I picked up first because they both fell on the floor. And 222 2222, sorry. 2222. And the subtitle for this one is Feminine Forces. Ha ha ha! I'm going to read the paragraph. Feminine forces, wasn't I just talking about forces? Different kind of forces than in the Rage Against the Machine song where, uh, Rocha, what the heck's that boy's first name? It's something with an A. Alex? I don't think it's Alex, but Rocha's his last name, but, <laughs> um, there's a line in one of their songs that goes, there are those, there are forces that burn crosses, something like that. And feminine forces are going to operate differently. <laughs> They're going to sting you and burn you in a different kind of way. It's more subtle. You're not going to like go away and burn up immediately. You're going to have to feel that slow burn. <laughs> It's reparations. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the paragraph reads, You can do everything by yourself, but life is to be shared. Partner up with the right spirit, and you'll become a force. Honor commitments. Okay, hold on. Power up with the right spirit, and you'll become a force. <clears throat> right and force stuck with me because... The right wants you wants to force people to not have certain rights that they've had for all but ten years of my sixty. <laughs> so they were hard fought civil rights, uh, the right uh, to uh, feminine health care, like whatever you're there to do. They. They say it's abortion, but they don't want to let you do anything. So it's there's something else going on. Um, they they want to take it away from you. They want to force people to have kids that are sometimes the people that are going to have the kids are kids that have had a child or a pregnancy forced upon them, and that's so many ways of like okay with a lot of people or I mean there's a lot of stuff that people are trying to bring back that's full on biblical like child marriage and things like that and we, I, we don't need to roll back time that far thank you very much I, I don't think that that many people want it but there are forces that will force the issue and force your hand and force you into things that you don't want to be doing. Like contracts we're dealing with right now. Like I talked about, uh, well, it was Comcast and they're kind of famous for not wanting to shut off your account when you decide you're done with it. They just want you to pay endlessly for something you absolutely don't want. And how the hell is that legal? You can't really do anything about it, and you can do even less when you talk to their support, supposed support staff. You know what they're supporting mainly now is they'll sit there and listen to you tell you, 
tell them what's wrong with your account and then they'll go, we have this great deal. And I'll be like, I don't give a fuck about the deal. What about the service issue that I have? And they'll give you another number. It'll be another person trying to sell you something. So you're forced to deal with either the online bots or sometimes you can get a person on to call you and then they're going for inexpensive labor, I guess, or they're not paying enough to get Americans in there. I'm sorry. I know people are rude to people with heavy accents and I really try to not be, but you, I don't know about everybody else, but by the time I'm calling, I'm already riled up. Like I couldn't fix it myself and I just want it done. And so it is just more frustrating and I don't want to be rude. And then so I'm like giving myself an ulcer, trying to be civil or nice to people and getting more and more upset because they can't do things. And then they tell you they did stuff and then it didn't get done. And it's like, it's happened so many times. I feel like they know that that's what's happening. They being the heads of the company and they don't care. They're like, we're just getting our money and screw you. I'm sure like, Comcast and things like that have lost a lot of money because of streaming. Don't take it out on me. Take it out on the streaming companies, you terrible, avaristic anuses. <laughs> but that brings me to something that I, I wanted to touch upon. Speaking of going back to biblical things, we seem to have like uh people want to relive biblical stuff but like not everyone wants to go back to that and there's reasons not to because everything rolls forward everything so trying to take everything back is just gonna create <clears throat> I mean, they've gotten pretty far along in being obstructionist, um, the right. And it's not even like, they'll blame everything on the Democrats, but I'm sorry. Everything they're blaming the Democrats are of doing, Republicans also do. It's ridiculous. And people that want to believe what they want to believe will take them at their word and they will believe somebody that is Mr. Fake News lying to them before they'll look at the actual news there. You gotta be discerning though because like any news has a bent, you know, has an uh, people say agenda uh, you know, maybe some do like, uh, oh my god <laughs> that paper that helped out Trump with the guy with the push broom mustache pecker, oh god <laughs> They definitely had an agenda. Hide uh, indiscretions. I'm being nice about, I'm using a, a civil word. Hide indiscretions so that it wouldn't look bad for the candidate who wanted to be president. And so all everything going on now don't look great for uh, the candidate, but <clears throat> why did I bring up the biblical thing though? I don't think I answered myself. <sighs> I'm going to have to come back to it. Oh, so anyway, I stopped on Partner Up With The Right Spirit. Um, and you'll become a force. Partner Up With The Correct Spirit. <laughs> and you'll become a force. You can become a force if you partner up with the right partner up with the right spirit uh, but I feel like if you don't understand what's wrong with taking away from people and basically just making it hard for other people that also live where you live and have to function just like you do like have, earn you know money for themselves and their family and everything that that entails um it's like, it's like a nonsense, 
issue, you know, it's like not, it's not a real thing. People can have problems with each other, but something usually happens, like an actual real thing, you know, when it comes to like racism, some people get in trouble for just being, like you've heard it before, whatevering while black. I definitely meet people that have certain expectations and then when they eventually come out with it, like some, not everyone is this way, but a certain breed of people will just spill their guts to you and not even realize that it's like, wow, have you had no person in your life to teach you manners ever? That's not, that's inappropriate. And they don't, sometimes even, like, they're not racist. Like, they have no clue that they're doing anything that could be untoward, you know? And it's like, I'm with the people that are like, it's not my job to educate you on that. And it really isn't. <laughs> but, um, you run into that from time to time. And that kind of attitude is just like, You come up with a bunch of reasons to have something wrong with somebody and then you're doing the same thing or worse to them and you don't even know you're doing it like that's not correct and I feel like that's sort of the attitude around the right in a lot of ways because <clears throat> they have this culture of not looking at or listening to stuff that affects them in their lives I mean you don't have to agree with it and go along with it and become a drag queen or whatever you think the left, because they think the left is forcing people to do stuff and it's just like, the left is just doing whatever they were doing, just like the right does, but the drag queens and the gay people or the brown, whatever it is, is triggering other people that are not those same things. But on the other side, <laughs> the guns and stuff and the conservative, especially when it moves into the religious stuff, the Christianity, it starts getting real narrow and real old timey and backward and weird. And that triggers, uh, and the taking away of rights, like that's a big deal though. And that triggers the left, but it, all of the things trigger everybody. I mean, <clears throat> that, I think that's another device that like the media, Whichever one, online or broadcast, which, whichever one's real or not, they all know that their content is going to affect people in a certain way. If it bleeds, it leads. That should tell you a lot about, you know, journalism. Uh, but I want to I wanna stipulate, that's going to be the merchant selling the journalism. It's not going to be the journalists necessarily um, if they have journalistic integrity though if you're just all completely biased by your emotion then you're not a good journalist because that's like <laughs> it's kind of like in the definition you, you don't make it all about you <laughs> so um, <clears throat> moving on honor commitments and people around don't judge listen i would say that in addition to what i just said that goes right along with it so the key words on this card are relationships balance prosperity efficiency patience humility Well, there definitely needs to be balance in the relationships that I was just talking about uh, the, in the political realm because it affects so many of us, like the actual legislation does, and then what the legislators say have an effect, and then all of us have an effect on each other when it comes to those things, among other things. <laughs> but... um it is good to try and not judge and to listen and to just hear people out. If anything, like I said, you do not have to agree, but 
you don't have to agree, but I don't think it's a bad thing to know where people are coming from at all. And I know I feel better when someone hears me out. So I don't know. I mean, just give it a try. And then finally, the 888 card. So I am actually going to look up that number because it's telling me I should look up that <laughs> number before I get the card. Oh, there it is. Ah, it went off. I can put it back on. Uh, okay, so. Spirit Yule. Oops. I would use the voice to text, but it's terrible. <laughs> With this face, fake teeth. Fake chews. <laughs> oh, yeah. Significance. <laughs> Fake chews. <laughs> Special. Oh, I did write it correctly. The significance of eight eight eight. Yeah, don't just hit the eyeglass or the magnifying glass. Uh, they keep changing the interface or the format or whatever the frick on these social media sites. And it's so annoying. Because it just looks different. They just move stuff around. Trolling. Maybe it does something. I don't know. It's just now I have to figure out what the heck now. I have to do stuff different. Why? <laughs> No change. No, no unneeded change. Like why? Okay, sorry. <laughs> In conclusion, well, why are you starting with the conclusion? All right, it's the top thing listed. In conclusion, the angel number eight 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 emerges as a beacon of abundant possibilities, balance, and spiritual alignment in the realm of numerology. Another one says, coming across angel number 888, 888 means that your love life is attracting a positive and healthy relationship. Well, that sounds good, everybody. <laughs> additionally, this is the third one that's showing. Additionally, the angel number 888 is associated with karma. The principle in simple terms means meaning what goes around comes back. that but that's what they say okay yeah that's what they say now I'm gonna put my music back on I'm listening to some prog rock today some of your fragile album by yes something I used to <laughs> skip school and listen to every day with the uh, younger brother of one of my classmates who used to hang out with with our BMX bikes and we'd, uh, we'd meet up at lunchtime. He was like in, I was in high school and he was in junior high school and and I his house is like across the street from my school but his school was a fair distance away and he'd be there for lunch every day. And we listened to that album and uh, inhale burning leaves, basically. Anyway, so 888 card, the subtitle is what? Karma, what was I just saying? <laughs> or what did I just read? It wasn't my, I didn't cough it up. I just found it. So I will read what the paragraph says. A lot of money is coming your way. Fortune refers to more than just monetary and material success. If you don't appreciate the people in your life now, you won't have them tomorrow. This message encourages you to take personal responsibility and use it to realize your greatest potential. Well, um... 
the reason why I kind of was like iffy on the whole, what am I doing on time? I gotta finish up here. The whole what goes around comes around thing of karma. That is totally a true thing that happens like, <laughs> like rubber band or boomerang style when we do something, but it, I have been learning that it's not as simple as that when it comes to karma because karma is not a punishment for something that you've done before. Uh, it is what you have pre-planned to live out in your life and uh, to me that's different than what goes around comes around. <laughs> There may be some element to it, and and that is a, a something that does happen is that uh, well you'll do something and then uh, you, your opportunity uh, to respond if it was not a great thing like if you have some apology tour to do then. Uh, you will get that opportunity but that's not necessarily a bad thing like a you're in trouble and now you gotta pay situation it's your opportunity to live out both sides of the story pretty much <clears throat> um, appreciating the people in your life that seems to be an issue that the right has, they don't want to do that. I mean, they'll uh, they'll love their family or whatever. But here's something that uh, people say it, and I always kind of cringe because it's not really true outside of the circle of people involved. And it is when uh, someone is describing somebody who's not around for whatever reason, they'll say, "Oh." They're the best person in the world. They'll give you the shirt off your back, their back. They'll do anything for you. But have you thought about if it's not like the family and friends, if they're still that person? Because I feel like we're not seeing a whole lot of that in our society. Like, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't understand why what you want would outweigh the decision of someone who's decided that they need a certain type of health care with their medical practitioner, which you probably are not, that's probably not your profession, and you think that you have the right to decide things for this person, and you have no idea what fulfilling a requirement that they decided not to take on because of costs issues for instance you know like we don't know what motivates each other to do things unless we're close and we're talking to each other and we tell one another these things everything beyond that with people you don't know that is an assumption that is like I don't understand why people can't see like no one wants that done to them you don't want it you don't like they never I feel like people say stuff that they like should happen to other people because they don't like something about what the other people is said did whatever but you know they want all of whatever they want and god forbid anyone come around and take anything away and it's like why don't you get the other people feel that way about their life and their stuff too it makes me sad but I know everyone will get there. We're here to feel and it makes me sad. <laughs> That's what I feel. So, um, this is actually five eights. <laughs> or sorry, four. Two times four is also eight. I was, I, I notice things after I get through with these readings. I'm almost done here, but I just wanted to say, unfortunately, I notice after, like even after I write in the description box, which I often do, 
that'll be beneath the video. I was just thinking things like, oh, I should have said this, and oh, I just got that thing about it. I've been noticing when I pull these, they usually have some kind of thing where they're connected to each other, and the messages were kind of disparate today, but I just noticed as I'm wrapping up, 888, two times four is also eight, so I guess that's the little carryover. That is a lesson for me and anybody else still learning how to read cards to notice things like that because God, I wish I could tell you this woman's name because she was so much of an inspiration but I can't go on Instagram anymore uh, she does twin flame stuff or she did at the time God like six years ago now or more and uh she had a dining room table and she would fill up, I mean, like a pretty big table. <laughs> She'd fill up that whole table. I've got like, I don't know, like five intact decks here. And I'm like, whoa, I got, you know, I don't have a whole bunch of space. I think I could do it now, like just keep going and going and going. Um, but I don't have all of the that many cards. <laughs> Still accumulating cards, but hey, it's payday soon. I'm going to get one more deck, I think. Maybe. We'll see. I, I got a budget. <laughs> I got a budget to eat here, too. Wow, are you ever in the way? I hope soon, 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 that my new place of residence will be ready for me to move in. Because I'm, it sounds like I'm going to have a lot more space. And I'm going to get me a table. I'm gonna get me a big table. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm all excited. Oh, thank you and good night.